What's going on, folks? I am Goat. Welcome back to Warframe. So, as promised in the last video, I said that we're going to talk about ribbons. Okay, now, now, just for the basis of showing that I, I don't just have some minuscule ribbon, ribbon collection, which I think anybody who's been watching for a minute understands that I don't. Okay, you can have a max 180 ribbons in this game, um, including the ones that I'm either getting ready to sell or so on. I have 179 of 180. So yeah, I got some ribbons, and I got some ribbons for some very questionable weapons, like the Alternox, like the Basmu. Um, you know, I have a couple in here. You know what, let's just set these by name so it doesn't look so stupid. So yeah, so I got the Excelter, the Aolac, like, really? Uh, the Akimbo Furus, the Acarius, uh, the Akimbo Jagara, Akimbo Samadhi, Akimbo Stiletto, Alternox, Ambassador, mm -hmm. Ambrex, Angstrom, see, it's like I said, Angstrom. Uh, Archiplasmor, Argo and Vel, Argonok, Artax, Arm Spinosa, Estella. I've got a couple of Estellas there. Um, one's up for sale. If you see doubles, that's usually what it is. Uh, the Atomos, the Azathane, <clears throat> uh, the Basmu, like I said, the Batacor, Baza, the Bow for the Incarnate. I've got a few Boars. Those are the last two, actually. Got a couple of bull tours. One of those is up for sale. See, look at that. Look at that. That's pretty pretty tasty, right? That's pretty tasty for a bull tour. People don't understand it. Uh, the Breton, the Brack, the Broken War, Bronco, Bubonico, Burston. I mean, here we are. Uh, Catabolist. You know, I got a Burston up for sale. Mm -hmm. Critical chance, you know, critical chance, status chance, and punch through. That's not terrible. Has, doesn't have a negative, but it's not terrible. I mean, like, you can see, as I drag through, I have some very interesting choices for some weapons in here. Like, why in the fuck would I have some of these? You wouldn't be wrong for asking that. Some of these, there's going to be some people going, bro, please let me have that. Uh, there's going to be some people going, get rid of it. Why? You know, Kuva Twin Stubbus. Like, how many people do you see running the Kuva Twin Stubbus? Yeah. The Magnus, right? Yeah, like, yeah, there's there's some interesting ones in here. But how good do they need to be? You know, like the pennant, there's another one. How good do they need to be? Because there's all these people talking about, oh, man, we got to have god rolls. You know, you need to have rolls that suit what you're trying to fucking do. Now, if you're trying to do level cap stuff, god roll level rolls are definitely what you want out of ribbons. But if you're just trying to play this fucking game and have a good fucking time, you do not need god rolls. Okay? Oh, here, hold on. I remember I had this motherfucker at. Oh, I know where. Right there. Yeah, it was right there. I can't believe I didn't have that on there. I'm apparently stupid. Forgot I took it off. So the Cedo Riven, right? This has fire rate, critical chance, and critical damage. Now, this doesn't really make sense because it's a full auto shotgun that has some minor ammo problems anyway, so that's not really great. But there is a kick to this thing, right? Like... There's a, there's a kick to this gun. I mean, it's puncture based. There's a lot of ways to build this thing. This is personally built as a almost a full on primer. Okay, but this gun wants critical and it wants status. So is this a great role for this for this weapon? Absolutely not. It's a riven disposition one. You're not going to get great stats with a no negative. That's rule numero uno about rivens. If there is no negative on this on this. Uh, you know, on any ribbon, the stats are always going to be lower. But do you need god rolls in order for this to work? No. Depending on how you're using the weapon. The reason why I say this is status is because look at what the alt fire glaive does. 150% status and almost no goddamn crit. But here we are at 69.6% .6 crit. Now, if I continue to roll this, which has got 50 rolls in it's whatever. But if I continue to roll this, sure. Can I get better better stuff out of this? Absolutely, I can. Because that plus fire rate is completely unnecessary for this gun. But it's, you know, what I just kind of sat on. Because it's fun to prime enemies and then use other weapons. Like, for example, my Tenet Psychron. Again, not a god roll riven. Base damage and critical chance. Now, why in fuck's sake would I do that? 
Why would I do base damage and critical chance with a status-based weapon? And I'm, by the way, I got this roll at like 152. So I tried a few more times to get something a little different because I was just getting, dude, the game was trolling the shit out of me on this. This and the strun. Oh my God. I want to end the latum. I got trolled so hard on a few ribbons. Um, but is this perfect? Absolutely not. You want a firsthand, like a firsthand bit of why this works? You gotta remember, these are not God rolls. Okay? Absolutely not God rolls. I mean, I'll, you know what? Hold on. Fuck this. Let's just go prove. Let's go with just full on high armored enemies. Cool. High armor, dealing a lot of slash. Let's just fuck with Mayo. Mm. I like my glaive doesn't even have a ribbon, but my Serata does. Your enemies have grown fierce. Use all the why did learn. why does everybody like I understand if you're trying to level cap, sure. But if it's just for dick systems. measuring of oh I got a better ribbon than you, fuck off. Your way. Roll for whatever works. Okay, look, so we got buddies around here, right? So let's proc them. Alright, so now the proc with damage. Oh look. This is the Cycron without a god roll. I mean, this is melting like base star chart. Come on, guys. Come on. Come on, let's play. Here we go. Boom. You prime them with a bunch of damage, and they're basically staggered, fucked up. Maybe their health is taking damage. Maybe their armor is taking damage. Does it really matter? Absolutely not. I think it's hard to question if that works or not right i think it's hard to question like the alternate fire of that gun has like should i build more into the alt fire probably but i do want it to kill on the front side of the cedo which is why i went for the critical chance of critical damage and yes the cedo is one that i intend to continue to roll but like what other weapons you know we saw the exergis this isn't a perfect roll it works Base damage, multi-shot with a minus two infested. Well, guess what? On a status-based shotgun, it has a potential of outputting 81,000 points of damage in total. You cannot take that at face value because it's status, and we're taking into account all of the pellets hitting one goddamn target at the same time. Doesn't usually happen. But it works. It fucking, I mean, it definitely works. What else? What else we got? Um, The Gotfa. Right? I got a ribbon for the Godfa, I think. Yep, I do. Multi-shot critical chance minus puncture. Now, why would I take a minus puncture on a puncture-based weapon? Because puncture is dog shit. Critical chance and multi-shot on this thing, when this thing basically says, if I apply a status effect, the next shot has a 15% chance to have a critical chance of 300%. So that basically means that I'm making it almost 400% crit when this thing does crit. It's kind of like insta-death. Yes, it's a single target weapon. It is kind of niche. Could I build into status? 100%. Would you know? Would that be more of a god roll? Status chance, status duration, or status chance, critical damage, multi-shot? Sure. You know what, though? Multi-shot critical chance with a minus to puncture works exceptionally fucking well. What else do we got? The bursting, right? Here we go. Plus damage to Grenier, plus a shit ton of critical chance, minus to impact. Again, why would I take a negative to impact? Because I want Slash to be the primary progenitor damage. On the incarnate side of this gun, 269.2% critical chance with an 8.4 multiplier, but still carrying a 90% status. Yeah, it does a, it does a lot of red crits, but it is a lot of bullets. So what else do we have, right? The Boltor. People question this one. I don't know how you question this. 182.1 critical chance, 137.7 critical damage, 109 multi-shot with a minus to fire rate. Now, why would I take a negative to fire rate when I'm also running critical delay on here? Well, because I buffed with Prime Shred, but I didn't do it for the fire rate. I actually buffed it for the punch through because when you put punch through on this fucking thing, it absolutely fucking wrecks everything that you're shooting at. 
the Boltor is surprisingly very good with a Riven. That's not what I was trying to do. The Bratton, right? The Bratton Riven. This ain't perfect. Status duration, critical chance. It does explosions. Why not increase that status duration for what it's doing? Making boom booms whenever it hits enemies. Not mad at this. I know, hammer shot's not even like the perfect fit in here. It's fine. It's totally fine. Um, the Torrid. This is one, I don't even remember how many rolls I got in this bitch. 50. Critical chance, status chance, minus mag capacity. Mag capacity don't mean shit because it, it doesn't affect the Incarnate. But what it does do is give me those kinds of fucking numbers, which is kind of bordering on ridiculous. And there are people that have better rolls than me. Now, is that going to taper off as the Torrid gains popularity? Absolutely it is, but it's still going to keep it in an exceptionally powerful range. These are not god rolls. They're good, but they're not god rolls. The Soma. Critical chance, damage to Grenier, base damage, minus damage to Infested. Well, when you get to the Incarnate side and the numbers are so dog shit, it's kind of good to buff that crit. It really is. And especially when you're running the uh, Hada Satya. Makes it that much better. This is building more towards the weapon specifically because I'm trying to buff the incarnate side and it works quite well. The strun, you want to you want to see what anguish and pain is? This is anguish and pain. 335 fucking rolls on this bitch, and this is literally the best roll I've gotten out of this motherfucker. And I will continue to roll it as I feel necessary. But when you've got 181.5 critical chance, or 181.5 multi-shot, plus you have a bonus critical chance, and the only negative that you're taking is to Infested, this makes the Incarnate side of this gun absolutely stupid. 202 crit with a 7.1 multiplier and 546% status. This is just pure death. Just pink mist of death. You know, but I've, it, it, like... None of these have really been, like, amazing god rolls. Like, the Boltor one's actually pretty good. Uh, my Boar Riven. I, I don't even remember what this one is. Uh, damage of Grenier, multi-shot, and critical chance. A no negative roll. Again, do I need to probably re-roll it? Yeah, because this is like a triple beam, shorter, shorter beam length version of the Torrid whenever you get the Incarnate side. But it also helps the primary side of the gun immensely with this roll. But is that perfect? No. But for the Boar... It's pretty damn good. Yo, I mean, like, there's... I've got weapons all over the place that have ribbons. There's a, there's a reason why I have all these. But something like... You know, bare basics. Go to the Latum, right? What's the one thing you want with, like, the Felarx, the Latum, and the Fenwar? You want negative crit. Sometimes the other stats really don't apply so much. This one actually works out a little. Status chance... The plus impact is kind of whatever. I don't really give a shit because this thing murders anyway, but a minus to critical chance. And yeah, that's 152 rolls. And I actually have a Latum Riven up for sale that actually has a better... Well, no, actually, I'm going to give that to Queen, but still, uh, that actually has an even bigger negative. It's like a minus 56.2 to fucking crit, if I remember correctly. I'm looking at the gun. Why not just look at the Riven that I'm going to give her? 54.9 damage you know plus damage to corpus plus recoil or plus reload which is good because that means it's going to transition into the incarnate side minus weapon recoil which is actually surprisingly really good and then a fat ass negative to crit and the only reason that that matters is because of this the less chance you have to crit the more damage output that you can potentially do with this weapon it's bonkers but it's the truth like the fell arcs Minus critical chance, plus to, you know, plus to reload speed, which is good because it transitions very good. Status duration, considering it's built to, you know, minimal status at best. Uh, and then base damage. This is why this thing is like my primary fucking assassination weapon. It's very fucking powerful. Uh, the Fenmore, there it is. I don't remember what the Fenmore roll is. I barely use this gun anymore. Uh, plus zoom, I really don't like that. Plus mag capacity, doesn't really matter. Negative to crit. So like this is one that needs to be re that needs to be re-rolled some more. But the negative to crit for right now works just fine and fucking dandy. Do you need god rolls to make Rivens work? 
Absolutely not. It's it's a dick measuring contest. Now, do you want the most potent rolls possible for a weapon? Yes. Within the realm of what you have available to you, yes. But something like the Bubonico, for example, something that has lost its lost its um its aura of funny and useful in lieu of incarnate weapons and a few other weapons over time. But I gotta tell you, this thing is no punk. The reason being is if you can get a roll like this with a harmless negative, something like a negative damage to infested is perfect. But if you can get multi-shot status chance and a critical chance in one roll and then get a harmless negative, first of all, those numbers are going to be better. Even though this is a Riven Disposition 2 weapon, um, those numbers will be better. But this gun applies crit on the primary, you know, shotgun fire side, and then the alt fire is status. So I'm at 233.3 uh, status, but I'm still carrying an 88.4 crit. And guess what? Multi-shot. So it's a 19.5 multi-shot for the Bubonico. I'm not mad at this. It works really fucking good. So not to sound preachy, but God, I wish people would stop focusing so much on what Twitch streamers and YouTubers say about Rivens. Find what the weapon wants more than anything else. Find what the weapon wants and do your best to roll to that. And if you think you got a good enough roll, go test it. Go test it against the tankiest thing that you can fight. If it doesn't feel like it's performing well, then keep re keep rolling. Keep It gives you an idea. Okay, well, this doesn't work the way I was hoping. Time to roll again and go for something different. Yes, Twitch streamers and YouTubers can absolutely give you great advice on what works well with a weapon to a point. But it also plays very much into like... I mean, like, what does the weapon do? What other weapons are you putting around it? Oh, my God. Lavos is uh, having a fucking moment here. Um, I'm just trying to get my mouse over here. Okay, cool. Just for example, I can run the Serrata. Okay, my Serrata Riven. I had to specifically go for something with a element on it, and I don't usually do that. My primary reason for not usually doing that is because it locks you into a very specific way of building for damages. And especially with glaives, that's not a good time. Because you can normally only build for one type of damage. So like this particular build, as you see, is built for viral. And this thing does a, a guarantee two stacks of uh, impact and toxin whenever you blow it the fuck up. So it's like half of the overall damage output of what in the hell this thing wants to do. But as you can see by the numbers, um, it's basically very similar to the glaive, especially with the ribbon on here. It's, it's actually exceeding the glaive. It doesn't quite have as, the damage output as the glaive because the glaive prime is obviously just a weapon all in itself that is just destructive as fuck. But if we take this, this just basic toxin critical chance, Okay, just basic bitch toxin critical chance against these armored motherfuckers, right? Let's just go right back to these dickheads. So, Cedo with an okay ribbon, not great. Cycron with an okay ribbon, not great. And then the Serato, two stats, no negative. Each enemy is more powerful than before. Only with true mastery of the ten of so I'm not running perfect ribbons. I'm not running god rolls. I'm not running any of this cool shit, right? Life support has been cut off. Door open. They're trying to choke you out. Uh, first on. and foremost, I'm sending auxiliary life support. Serata by itself. Right? It's okay. A couple hits and the toxin pretty much just fucks her day up. But if I prime. I guess I need to scan you. Hi, how are you? What do you have? Nobody wants that. I say that. I mean, like, the damage output from this fucking thing is absolutely stupid. And especially since I'm running a maxed out, you know, melee duplicate on this thing. Yeah, it's it's definitely dealing some, some damage. So if I prime... You know, I can even go so far as to prime with the Cycron first. 
set them on fire. It comes down to how you're going to synergize your builds. That's personally how I find success with a Riven. Now, can you have a better role with the Serata? A hundred percent. But does it work? Yes. <laughs> but it's also about how you put, like, what shit you put around it. Like, the Tenet Glaxian, especially with the magnetic, uh, you know, like, built for, like, magnetic um, blast and toxin, and then you have the Serata couple mixed with that bullshit? Oh, my God. That is a thing. It's a fucking thing. Yeah, run whatever secondary. Like, I'm, I think uh, my Urelli is running um, the Tenet Galaxian, the, uh, the, the Compressa, and the Serata. And it's just absolutely wrecking everything. But there's also other things that come into Urelli that make it really, really, really good. Now, would I weigh the Serata and say that it's as good as the Glaive Prime? No. The Glaive Prime is, the, like, the best Glaive in the game. But is it pretty damn good? Yeah. Especially against Corpus. Oh, dear God, the Serata just wrecks Corpus. <laughs> but that's the whole point. Find the Rivens that you can synergize together with weapons that work really, really well in tandem with the frame. Don't focus burning through Kuva and doing a thousand fucking rolls on a Riven just because you're trying to get some god roll Riven or some god roll stats that some Twitch streamer or YouTuber told you. You do you. At the end of the day, I'm begging and pleading with you. Just you do you. Find what works good for now because you can always go back and re-roll if, if it ends up kind of falling off. If you start becoming a level cap player, you're going to want to start looking for those god rolls, and that's fine. But you do you for now. Make it work for now and find joy and happiness in the game for now. And then as time progresses, you start saving up some more Kuva, farm some more Kuva, whatever. Go back and play. I mean, I think my Strun Riven is the one that's got the most rolls on it. It's like, it's got a lot, like 355 fucking rolls or some bullshit. So yeah, I mean, like, it's, it's a really, really, really good time to just tinker. That's another part of the tinkering process for me is rolling Rivens and seeing what I can get at them, right? So that's what I got. So folks, I hope you take the advice. Just have fun with Rivens. Don't put so much pressure on getting them rolled perfectly and all this crap. Roll good for you, okay? Just roll good for you. So thank you very much for watching. As always, catch you in the next one, all right?